Okay, so we are going to today we are going to do graph. Our topic for the day is going to be graph of trigonometric functions. Okay, so why do we have to do this? That takes us to the objective. So the objective is to sketch the graphs of basic sine, cosine, and tangent functions. Why do we have to learn how to sketch it? Because many devices that are used in daily life, the devices plot some of these graphs. So it is important that it is important that um, we know how to plot the graphs so that we understand how some of these things work better. So having said that, the three functions we are going to consider are sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay. So now, before we do this, we have to, um, you know, mention some of the physical things that can result into sine graph. For example, if you tie, if you tie a string on a simple pendulum. I'm just using simple pendulum as an example because uh, it is one of the things that can we can use to ex experiment something. On a simple pendulum bulb, you just tie a string on it and then attach it to an object and then allow it to swing. So in your science class, you will discover that it's going to be swinging up and down, not necessarily up and down from left to right, you know, making some angles in between. So let me sketch what I just um, said right now. If this is a stand, just a stand that you can place on a table, and then you have another clamp right here, you have a clamp, then on this clamp, on this clamp, you have a string with a pendulum bulb. This you can do with any object. Then just allow it to swing. You know, this is the string right here. So if you just move it, if you move it either left or right. So if you move it to the, let's say you move it to the right direction, you move it here instead of when it's relaxed, it will be like this. Now, when you display it, when you display it, you can have something like this. And then if you allow it to swing, it will go directly. It will go and then come here and then it will go back. So it will just be going this, 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 you know, it will just be rotating. On the other hand, if you are standing at the center somewhere, this is an individual, and then the person is holding a string, you can swing an object. You know, you swing it around, you know, and it will make a complete circle. Okay. So each time it makes a complete circle, it covers so a 360 degree. It comes back, makes another circle, covers another 360 degree, and it will come back. It will keep making circles, you know, continuous circles until uh, the force that is holding it becomes weak and it will drop. Okay. So there is always a force that is holding this thing, pulling it away, and then another force that is pulling it towards the person who is holding it. Um, in science, those forces are called centripetal and centrifugal forces. That's not our concern today. Our concern is to know that once it goes round one time, it has covered one revolution, one revolution. Okay, once it goes round, it has covered one revolution, and that one revolution is equivalent to uh, 360 degree. Okay, so another illustration would be a clock. You know, a clock, you have your clock, everybody has a clock, not the digital one, just the regular clock that you see every day. It has the center, and then you have the minute hand or the second hand, as the case might be. So you probably have 12 here. And then at this point, you have three, um, six, nine. OK, so this minute hand can move the entire one quarter. It can move uh, half position. It can move 
um, the other three quarters, and then it will just keep going. So at each position, it will cover a certain degree at each position. So at this position, this is where um, at this position, uh, it probably you can say this is um, 90 degree. 90 degree with respect to x axis, and this will be uh, 180 degree right here. 180 degree here, and then this will be something like right here will be something like. Um, 270 degree and when it goes round it covers 360 degree okay so these are things that are making constant circular motion including the wheels of the car you drive or the bus you take to school the wheels cover each time the vehicle moves the wheel rotates a complete 360 degree you see, sometimes you just push the car, it will not complete a motion, but it will cover a certain angle, true or false. So those are the, uh, the, the way these angles are generated. So our goal today would be to plot a graph involving the angles that are covered, and then with respect to uh, the distance they covered, basically. So in order for us to do that, you have to create some kind of um, a table, data table, if you will. So just create a data table that looks like this. Create a data table um, that looks like this. Okay, so these are your, your angles. And this is sign of the angle. So the angle, you, you, you indicate it with theta. So, this is angle in theta. Theta is the angle, and then you you have sine theta. All right. So we just want to make the plotting very easy for us. So we can do angle 40, uh, 0, 45, 90, 0, uh, increment of 45. Let's just do increment of 45. So 90 plus 45 should give us about 135. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. Is it correct? 145 plus 90. All right. So uh, then 135 plus another 45 should give us um, 180. And then... Hey, did you say 125 plus 90? I said 45 plus uh, 90. Oh. Is it 135 or what? Yes, it's 135. Okay, so just increase the number. Increase the number to uh, by 45 until you get to uh, three, at least 360. That's the minimum. So 180 plus 45 should give us, is it 225? Just keep increasing the number. Plus another 45, uh, 270. Plus another 45 would be uh, probably... Is it 315 and 360? So what you are going to do is, right now you are going to use your calculator and find out the numeric value when you press sign zero, sign 45, sign 90 degree, and you know, you know when you press those values. And then you have to repeat the process for uh, right now. Repeat the process for cosine. So just do the same thing. Do the same thing for cosine. So this is your theta. So when you press the number, just you can use uh, one or two places of decimal is fine. Probably two places of decimal, it's okay. So this is your theta and this is your cos theta. And you repeat the same number. You just use the same number, 0, 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270, 315, and 360. You can go beyond 360 if you want to, but the minimum we can take today is 360. So I'm going to give you uh, like three minutes to fill up the, da uh, the data value. Use your cell phone calculator. If you have TI-84, that's even better. I recommend that you buy it. You buy TI-84 and keep it by yourself. It becomes yours and you can use it. 
you need that device. You need to be familiar exactly how all the buttons work. So you have three minutes to complete the table. So the three minutes will expire at um, 9.07, 9.07. Okay, this is 9.07. So how many people have completed? Let me know if you've completed. One or two places of decimal are, is fine. You don't have to write all the whole num all the whole uh, ten digits. Just write I, one or two. I yeah, didn't but, the table, but I'm not sure if I got the right answer. Yeah, let us know what you have so we can verify it. Like so, I said, I have hold on it. I have said it repeatedly. If we are, if we have all the right answers, then we shouldn't even be here. We are here because we don't have all the right answers. So that's what we are seeking to get. So if you present your result, if it is uh, if it is not correct, we correct it. If it is correct, we will acknowledge it. So there is nothing that should present uh, prevent anybody from uh, presenting their findings. So go ahead, tell me. I am going to ask you for a, 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 uh, some numbers, and then you tell me what you get. So okay. tell me um, 135, sign 135. I got 0 0.707. Okay, I say one place, one or two places of decimal. Okay, 0 0.70. Okay, good. So I'm going to write uh, um, 0 0.70. Next person, tell me what you got on um, course 45. Course 45. Point seven course 45. Point, point zero. Okay, point seven zero. You said, yeah. Okay, zero point seven zero. How about another person? Tell me what you got on um, sign three one five. Negative seven zero. Point seven zero. Yeah, okay. uh, negative zero point seven zero. How about uh, next person? Tell me what you got on sign zero. Sign zero. Zero. Sign zero is zero. How about cost zero? One. One. Okay. So how about um, cost 180? Negative one. Negative one. Okay. How about sign two? Only one person is speaking. I'm hearing only one voice. So how about uh, sign 225? Negative 0 0.7. Negative. 0 0.7. Okay, next person sign 45. 0 0.70. 0 0.70. Next person cost 270. Cost 270. Zero. Okay, how about cost uh, 360? One. Okay, so I'm going to give everybody uh, another one minute to complete the rest if you haven't done that already. So I'm giving everybody a chance right now to fill up the gap before we continue. One minute. So you have about how many um, cells to complete? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably eight to complete. If you haven't done that already, you have one more minute to do so. If you have done that already, you take a one minute break by yourself. So what we just did right now, we could like extend it to um, 720 degrees. So now we are going to plot these figures in a graph. We are going to plot this figure in a graph and let's see what it looks like. So just pull out your graph paper. If you don't have a graph paper, let me um, show you what you can do because we need some kind of accurate results. Get your line paper. Get your line paper. Um, hold on. Let me get a line paper here. Okay, this is your line paper. Here's what you do. Take a ruler and then draw a bunch of lines vertical to your line paper. Just draw a bunch of lines. For example, that's line one. I hope you can see what I'm drawing. You know, you draw it like this. Just uh, estimate equal, uh, equal um, distance separating each line. So that means you're creating your own graph, okay? So you just created your own graph right now. And then this is basically, you already have your horizontal lines in a line paper. 
So all you're doing is you're tra trying to create a vertical line. All right, so create that as much as possible. This is how we create graphs in, in, in the place where students are serious. And parents probably don't have money to buy the graph paper because sometimes they don't even have a place to buy it. Okay, so we just have a graph paper now. So next is, I will even use this one that I just created. So now we are going to plot the graph. So I will demo with about, um, I will demo with um, like two or three values. So let's start with the sign graph. So I am going to use a different color. So, and this is my horizontal line that you need to draw. I'm sorry, the vertical X axis. This is, hold on, let me draw the vertical X axis, or Y axis rather. So this is your Y axis, and then this is your X axis. So this is your zero right here. So you can pick your scale. You can do 45, 90, 270, you know, all those numbers you wrote there. So uh, what was the first number? Zero. The next one was 45. The next was what? 90, um, 135, 180. What was the next? Two, two, two what? 225. And then you keep going. So now uh, sine zero is what? What's the value on sine zero? Look at your table. Sign zero is? Zero. Okay, so this is your point where sign zero falls in. So by the way, on the, on the vertical axis, you can label it as something like one, two, three. Okay, now let's go. This is your one, two, three. And of course, this is your negative one, negative uh, two, and um, negative three. Here you can have your negative 45, negative 90, negative uh, 135, and then it, it continues going. So now, how about uh, sine 45? Sine 45 is what? 0. 0.7, is it? Is that correct? Look at your table. Sine 45 is what? As you say, Mr. Ikeu. I'm asking everybody, sign 45 is what? Look at your table, the table you just created. 0 0.70. 0 0.70, okay. So let's just say 0 0.7 is, 0 0.5 is half here. So 0 0.7 is going to be somewhere here. Next, sign 90 is what? Yeah. Look at it, sign, sign 90 is one. So how about um, sign 135? 0 0.70. Okay, so somewhere here. And then you keep plotting. You keep plotting until you get to your 360. So you keep plotting. So once you finish your plotting, you have to join your lines, connect your lines, connect your lines. So you, you plot in. So just connect your line. I hope you're paying attention. Connect your lines, you know, until you get to uh, your 360. So I'm giving you three minutes to plot the sign and then another three minutes for the cosine. You just plot in and then you're connecting your, uh, your graph or your points rather. So three minutes to plot the sign and three minutes to plot the cosine. That's six minutes. So I'm gonna check back to, uh, you know, check back with you at. Mr. You said we're plugging in the cos and the sign on the yes. graph. Yeah, you plot the sign graph first. I have plotted about four points. So you have to complete all the points for the sign. And then you complete the same thing for the cosine. And let's see how the uh, graph looks like. So you completed the whole thing for um sign, for cos? Yes. So, so only doing sign. Yeah, I have done, I have plotted, I, I have demonstrated how to plot the point for with sign. So now it is up to you to uh, finish it up and then also uh, plot the point for cosine. That's the current task that everybody is, is supposed to be doing now. Are we supposed to plot it on the same graph or different graphs? Uh, different graphs. Do it on different graphs. That will make, that will make um, 
that will show the difference between them more. Are we going to do 10 as well? No, do the two we have done so far. You know, complete the two we have done so far. Let's let's compare the results first before we go into the tangent. Mm -hmm. Have you completed the two of them? Yeah, that's what I was asking. Okay. Um, can you show it to me on your screen? Hold on. Uh, hold on. Um, 